Hi and welcome everybody. Welcome to the Creation Station on a beautiful Sunday in Southern California. Like always, without further ado, we're going to jump right in. This is a very workable Zoom solution with which I share my music with my clients. I use Zoom for that and I have a specific hardware and software combination that makes this whole thing workable. It has drawbacks like everything else, but it is enabling our client and ourselves to work on loudspeakers, don't have to use headphones. We are avoiding speaker blowback with a sophisticated ducking setup, which has to do with this track up here. But let me begin real quick by saying that I stream my audio in high resolution to my clients via Listen To. Listen To is by Audio Movers, and it has several plans. You can get a weekly plan, a monthly plan, or a annual plan, and that's of course what I opted for. Because once you start working with it, you probably won't be able to go back. It sounds absolutely smooth, it does the job really fast, and the client on the other end can even log on on any web browser, even on a cell phone, which is really practical. The way this works, if you guys haven't done this before, let me log in real quick. I have a session name, which is specific for this session, which will also create a different session ID for each session. See over here where it says change session name will change session link. That's awesome because that way every client and every production can have a unique session link. What I have to do next then is hit copy link like over here. I do require a password so they will have to enter that into the web browser. Then we're going to hit copy link. Now it says this link has been copied to the clipboard. I'm going to copy it over here. Let me redo this. Bingo. That's what it just created for me. That link needs to be sent to the client. There will also need to be another link sent to the client, which is from our Zoom session. Right over here, I click on Participant, hit Invite, Copy Invite Link, which is now done. So these are the settings over here. Let's go back to the session pad and copy that link below. Both of these links now go into one email and get sent to the client, okay? That's the step we need to do to prepare the session. I will not go into how to operate Zoom because I assume that you know how to do that already, but I'm gonna show you what the client on the other end sees. Let me explain to you real quick what happens when the client gets the link that we prepared for them which is to this listen to link. I'm going to copy it, and I'm not sure if this works on the same computer, but I'll give it a shot. I'm going to now put it into a browser window and hit Command V for paste and hit return. Aha, lo and behold, it's asking me for a password, which I have required. Submit. Let me go back into this session and play some music back, but I'm going to make it so that we're not hearing it coming out of Pro Tools. I'm going to set this listen to thing to pre, so no matter if the output is muted, it will still play back my mix into listen to. So I'm going to hit playback. Application is measuring. And lo and behold, there's the signal coming out of the web browser. It even works on my computer. There, is that nice? Absolute hi-fi, beautiful quality. And right now I have got it set to uh, a highest quality AAC, so it's a very nicely compressed format at 0.7 seconds. I could bring it down lower, but I just don't want to risk clicks and stoppage. So now let's look at the hardware and software components needed to make this setup work. Up here, what you see, this track that I'm highlighting right now is my master output track. See, it sits on my master bus and it has a send on it, which sends to listen to. See right there? It's set to unity gain because I found out that listen to will not clip if I go, you know, if I'm near clip on the master output bus and this sends out at unity gain, I've never seen listen to do a clip neither visibly nor audibly. So keep that at unity gain, that's what I would recommend. Just wanted to take a small second to ask you guys to please subscribe to this channel. I want to bring you a lot more of these videos that are specifically designed to make your life in the studio easier, especially in these times where we are in lockdown. Thanks so much, guys. 
So that's our track number two. Let me tell you what track number one is. Track number one is simply a signal tone track. If I highlight, if I just zoom in here real quick, you can see this is nothing but a sine wave at, you know, fairly good output level. I'm actually bringing it up a little bit. What this does, it does nothing other than trigger two side chain compressor. Here, I actually used three in a row. They do nothing but ducking. And what they duck is what comes from my microphone, the microphone I'm speaking on right now, here, this one, and what the client is saying, as well as what they're hearing on their speakers. This preventing blowback, and I'll explain that in a second. So here, as I hit playback, and only when I hit playback, you can see that, for example, the client's talk back, the sound that's coming from the client is being ducked. Take a look. Bingo. See, the gain reduction is like minus 50 or minus 55 over here. So that means I cannot hear them at all. Why do I do that? It's very simple. Let's take another look at listen to. This application is set to a fairly low buffer setting, so it only takes 0.5 seconds for our sound that we're sending from our session to arrive online. Remember that we're sending audio also through Zoom, which has a very different delay setting, and it's sometimes unpredictable. It might even change from session to session. If you work on speakers, that means your client is going to hear your really nicely high fidelity music streaming through listen to, stereo, just beautiful, and at the same time, through your microphone, from your own speakers, comes the music through Zoom as well. And very likely not at the same time. And that's really irritating. That's why we're ducking both signals. The signal coming from our microphone, as well as the signal that's coming back from the client and their speakers. Because our music blows back from their speakers to us. If you properly duck both signals during playback, you will be amazed how smooth the session can run. By the way, you can set the sound quality up really high. You can go PCM 24-bit if your connection allows that. Obviously, this is going to require some experimenting so that you can find out which settings are best for your client to get the kind of playback that has no dropouts whatsoever. I had the experience that sometimes even AAC 320k bits per second was too fast and demanded too much bandwidth. So. I've just brought it down in certain cases to 192, in rare cases to 128. That's only if the client has weak bandwidth available at their end and they would get something like stuttering, playback, or even downright stoppage in the playback, which is really annoying. Oftentimes I'm able to do 320 kbits per second. And with that, you can make mixed decisions of half a decibel. It's perfectly fine for that. Uh, the nice thing is also this says client limits 40 clients, so like th this is incredible, you know. I have never had more than two or three listening at the same time. In my personal experience, the fastest setting I could use where I did have no dropouts or very little dropouts was 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, now let's look at the hardware connections step by step. This is the client talkback. Now you can see over here it says it's coming in from line 3 and 4. Line 3 and 4 is an input on my Apollo interface which listens to the headphone output of my Macintosh computer. Take a look at this graphic and familiarize yourself with it for a second. You'll see very quickly that the trick is to actually use two different interfaces to make this setup work. So in other words, take a look at the zoom settings here. You see, my, uh, these are my settings. The microphone is listening to a separate interface. The Moto Audio Express is a cheap old interface, which I bought for something like 170 bucks on Reverb. But there's a trick. There's a good reason why the microphone is not plugged directly into the Moto Audio Express. This is my own talkback. You can see that this channel over here is measuring. So hey, one, two. Right? I put several compressors on it because the ducking wasn't 100%. It would still leave some audio pass through. So I followed it up with yet another compressor and yet another compressor. If your compressor ducks 100%, then you don't need to worry about this. But all compressors in that chain listen to the same side chain signal, which is coming from the signal ducking track, or track number one. 
Let's hit play back and see what happens. In this case, the music will come through through listen to to the client, but the client will not hear me talk because my microphone, which is coming in here, and my microphone is plugged directly also again into the Apollo interface, here in this case on channel two. It is being ducked by these compressors and then set out to a specific output called remote audio. That output goes to the Moto interface, which is responsible for the zoom communication. Let me explain again, it's two different interfaces. The Moto Audio Express is only responsible for carrying the signal of my voice, which is coming out of this track here, into Zoom, and for nothing else. It was necessary to do so because I could not use um, Zoom to listen to the Universal Audio interface. It was not working. And the reason for that is simply that Pro Tools is using the Apollo interface and it cannot be used by another application at the same time. So I just took this old interface for the very purpose of only streaming the microphone sound ducked by this track up here so that my clients wouldn't get speaker blowback. Once again, this is the track that provides the ducking signal and since it's open and it's a track that only activates on playback, means that the client's microphone gets ducked and my talk back to the client gets ducked at the same time. If I want to talk to the client or the client wants to talk to me, I usually encourage them to raise their hand and then we stop the playback and then we can communicate. Music comes through only through one source that way and which is listen to. Let's take a quick look. I'm just going to show you real quick down here. Watch the icon of my microphone over here. You see it's measuring, right? Now I'm going to hit play back in Pro Tools. See if the icon is still measuring. Gone. See? No more measuring. But the music is coming through Listen To straight into the client's web browser. And since it's being ducked, it's not showing up on the microphone indicator for Zoom. And what happens now is that I can be in my studio, I can be on speakers or headphones, my client can be on speakers or headphones, and the music blowback will never occur because I'm ducking the signal for both. That's the easiest way for me to do. So every time I open a session, I've got these four tracks to import. That's all I've done in order to get a very workable, practical solution to work remotely with my client. It's amazing how seamless and how flawless it is. One quick little hint, by the way, if you set a compressor to duck things, set its release fairly quick, something like 200 or 300 milliseconds. Because in very, very many cases, when you stop playback, you're going to hear your client comment and you want to have the communication line open as soon as possible. Anyways, that is my little solution, and may that enable you to work fluently with your clients. I have clients all over the world, including Brazil, and back then we did it with Skype, which had significant delays and a very, may I say, crappy sound quality, which it still has as of today. And the sound quality of Zoom, by the way, also leaves a lot to be desired, which is the only reason why I signed up with Listen To, because it gives me and the client this incredible clarity of the sound that we can transmit. So there you go, four tracks for each session. The signal track, the listen to output, the client's talkback is here, it's being ducked. Here's my own talkback to the client, being ducked as well. And here is the send, which sends the signal to listen to. That's it from the Creation Station, wishing you more creativity and more work that you can do online, which is right now literally 60% of the volume of work that I do. Wishing you the very best. Stay creative, stay strong. Stefan Obroff signing out from the Creation Station. Take good care.